Hey guys, Jalapeno Gal. Uh, this is going to be a little video today on some basic tips for beginner Prismacolor users because I see a lot of people in coloring groups and you know even people that watch my videos and are trying to accomplish some of the things that I've shown that just right away they're like I don't like Prismacolors they have a waxy buildup you have to uh, it, the pencil lead is so soft that when I press hard it just eats the pencil up and it's I, I believe it's because you don't have these very basic tips or the knowledge on how to use these in a way that will help you learn to build these skills and you're just jumping in there or people are guiding you in there and then not telling you some of the basic stuff you need to learn. So this is what I'm going to show you. These are just the very few basic things that you need to know about Prismacolors when you start. So that you don't just write them off and say, oh, I like Crayola better. Uh, you know, and these tips can be used with any color pencil. Don't misunderstand me. You, it doesn't just have to be Prismacolors. But these tips are a lifesaver to know if you're coloring with any soft lead pencil like Prismacolor, Faber-Castell, Marco Ravines, uh, Lyr Lyra, Lyrica, I don't know how to pronounce it, but um, the, the thing I cannot stress enough is light layers. That's how you build your things up when you want to layer and blend. You start with light layers. So I'm going to use blue. Let me make sure that I am on screen here for you guys. Okay. So I'm going to use my uh, cerulean blue and like I said you can use, I tend to use little circles when I color but you can, for the video I'm just going to do some strokes here. And I'm starting with a very light, light layer, almost as light as I can get it on this paper. And you'll see the tooth in the paper and that's okay. And you'll see why in just a minute. But Okay, so this is my light layer. Now let's say that... I want to add some tone or transition from dark to light. So once you get that basic light layer down, you're going to come in here and do another light layer on top of your first. And you see how that makes it darker and you're not having to push hard, you're not having to break your hand or hand cramps or swelling or anything like that. You just add that light layer and it creates a darker one. And then what I do is I bring that down because I'm trying to transition from dark to light and we, we're going to leave this on the bottom. And as you transition down, you lighten up that pressure or you let up on that pressure. So, and we're going to come back again. Light layer. Ease up on that pressure as I head down toward the light side. If you notice this hard line, then just come in there with not as much pressure as here or here, but you're just going to kind of come in and work it so that there's not a line there anymore. So, let's see, we want it darker. Another light layer. See how that works? And you're creating that transition from dark to light. And this is one of the key tips to any coloring is these light layers. Don't just jump in there and press hard. If you just jump in and press hard like this, which ooh, it makes me cringe when I do this. Once you get that color like that, you're not doing anything else on top of this color because it's waxy. It's not going to allow you to add anything on top that's very that's easy or that will look nice once you do it so you this is not what you want this is no do not want that you want this if you still want it darker on one end then just keep adding those light layers and then transition it down to your light end I know that I've showed you guys continuously. Well, I'll get to that in just one minute. Okay, I want to show you the difference in, um, let's see, I was going to show you purple. Let's go with purple first. These are the two colors that I'm going to be using. So, again, light layers. Oh, let me make sure I'm on camera for you guys because last time I went off, so now I have to redo the whole video. But 
that's okay because you guys need to know these tips so that you're not spending all this money on artist grade pencils and not knowing the proper techniques to get the results that you want and I'm sorry I did not show you guys this sooner I should have just like anybody else that you know recommends these to people So we have purple and blue, that's what we're working with today. Now, I know I've showed you guys a million times because this is what I use in most of my videos is my Winsor Newton blending medium with paper stumps. So then here, you want that vibrant. You don't want to see this white in here. You don't want to see this too. Now, I personally like either look. I, you know, if you like that, leave it that way. If you're wanting the vibrant pigment, and not wanting to see that white in there and you're wanting a smooth blend almost marker like then you come in with this paper stump and this blending medium and it's basically the same technique as you come down towards the lighter side you're gonna lift up on that a little bit and you're gonna pull that color out at the end I need to add a little more oil here and there you go you have a smooth and see you almost have that same it, it looks better but you almost have that same there and you're not having to kill your hand you know I mean if you have a big picture you're coloring and you're trying to achieve this look here and you have to press on every single thing you do that your hands are going to cramp and swell I don't care who you are I don't care what you say it's going to hurt and you're going to end up with this right here so let's flip it over. Let's do this purple. Isn't that pretty? I love that color. Don't forget if you like this video, subscribe so you can get more of my videos. And I am not an expert. I'm not an art teacher. I'm teaching you guys what I learn as I learn it. Okay, so there we go. Now, a couple other things that I want to teach you is the difference between your layering and your blending. And they're similar, but they're not quite the same. So when you layer, you are putting one color on top of another color versus blending the two colors together and it it does the part that's confusing about it is that it does blend the colors together somewhat but it's just a different different technique so I mean this is how I look at it like you're gonna put your blue on top of your purple here and this is layering so you're gonna start with your purple like so and a lot of people do this with greens and yellows. I probably should have done that. But like with leaves and whatnot, they'll they'll lay down their greens and then they'll go over the top of it with yellow. And I may even just grab a green and yellow and do that for you guys real quick. But that's what layering is. It's it's one on top of the other versus blending the two. So if you're blending, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take one color here and I'm so sorry if my dogs start barking they're just school bus um, one color here let's do it with blue and like that and then grab your blending medium whatever you use the pencil the marker the oops started on the wrong side your blender your marker uh, your oils your gamsol whatever you use And you see how it blends those two colors colors in the middle so that is your your blending now 
one other little thing I want to show you that I just think is really cool is with white. A lot of people don't know what to do with white and you can really do anything with white. You can come on top of something that you've already done and do some, you know, cross hatching like this and just add different things to it. There's so many things you can do. One of my favorite things is uh, like pulling the color. So what I mean by that would be like, let's say I have a line here, a line here, and it, you know, use your imagination however you want to do this. I'm just showing you what it does. And you take that, that white and come in like that. And it gives it like a creamy transition like that and I just think that's really cool um, see that's all I can really think of right now um, as far as just basic tips when you're new to Prismacolors or softcore pencils these are some things that you really need to learn remember light layers is the trick and if you can get these basics down then you can expand your knowledge so much you can look at people's pictures and pick out the colors that they've used and figure out how to do it and and what their technique is because you now have a better understanding of how to get this color in the middle this is not a separate color these are two colors blended to create this color so it's a lot easier than trying to figure out the different colors you see in other people's pictures so I hope this helps you guys. I hope that you give your Prismacolors a try again if you've used them and, you know, washed them away and said I don't like them. Pull them out. Try again. Watch some YouTube tutorials. There's a lot of them out there. And just practice. Um, you know, we're not all perfect. We're not all, you know, the best artists. But you have to learn somewhere. You have to continue to push yourself and grow. Or you're going to get bored with your hobby. So if you like the video, subscribe. Um, I also have a Facebook page that I will put the link to, to in the description box, and you can go join there. Um, there's a lot of great people there, uh, beginners, you know, advanced, intermediate, don't be shy. Uh, in my file section, I do have all my charts. I have lots of charts to different pencils um, where you can fill in the colors that you have. You can keep track of what you have and what you need. Um, blending charts, the whole nine yards. There's lots of information there and it's a, just a really fun group. So I hope you join and I hope this video helped you guys out. Bye-bye.